All right, everyone, you know there's a friggin' problem when a group like the New York Times that years and years ago, people, I, they never would have published something like this, is saying, oh, well, there are actually some benefits to China's great firewall. You know, the per pervasive intranet censorship that China has that means people can't really regularly communicate with the outside world. All in, uh, inside communication is heavily censored. It's looked at at a whim like your messages. There's, there's no, you know, you know, Fourth Amendment protecting you in China. There's no amendments at all. You don't have any rights in a state like China. That's actually, according to the New York Times, that is superior to the model now used by the Western world where we've got a laissez-faire kind of system uh, approach to the internet. Now, I would say that that approach has worked. Corporations do just fine at policing content for illegal material. New York Times doesn't mention that. They just look at this and they say, oh, well, you know, Chinese internet is so much better, ha ha, because the government's able to randomly throw people in jail for criticizing the regime. That's basically what it boils down to. Look, they're talking about, oh, well, it helps to police. Fake news is illegal in China. And, uh, you know, so no satire, because that would be classed the same. I, I wonder why it's banned. You know, I wonder. Oh, no fake news, which means no infotainment, which means, by the way, a lot of these cable uh, groups, they'd be kicked off too. Like CNN wouldn't exist on the Chinese internet. Fox News definitely wouldn't fucking exist because it's all infotainment. Most of it's just pure opinion, speculation. And on any given night, there are at least a few comments that are blatantly false and a hell of a lot of other half-truths. So they'd be fined up the ass. They wouldn't be able to exist in, in China's uh, media apparatus. So there's one silver lining. I, okay, I agree with the New York Times on one front. The New York Times would not be able to have a fucking online presence in the state of China because you'd get nailed. You'd be fined every single day until you went out of business. Good, the legacy media would die. Only problem is there'd be no alt media to compete either. That's when you just get a state media service. It's the only one that would be capable of reliably existing. There's another problem. Who, who exactly is guarding the hen house? It's the foxes. You get the government instituting a heavily censored intranet style policy. Now, there's heavy handed censorship of online content already in Western Europe. Germany's among the worst offenders, parts of the Middle East, parts of Asia too. But China's different. It's got its own intranet. It's explicitly under total state control. It requires no real effort for them to institute new rules, new regulations. If we had a service like that in the United States, would not, because we are not under a one-party system, which nobody here would support. Well, we are under one-party system, but we've got two parties. It's just that they're you know, ideologically very similar. Don't you think that it would set up a huge ass conflict every time the government changes? Like that's the entire point of having elections, you know, no permanent uh, stability, at least in the executive capacity. Things keep moving along a little. It gives you a little more malleability to work with. Wouldn't that begin stagnating as each successive administration attempts to simply destroy its competitors online? Like anyone that criticizes them, oh, well, this is fake, it's fake news by selectively enforcing uh, things. Look, selective enforcement's the biggest problem you would have in a Western-style country if you had such a uh, system. Not only that, it would violate several constitutional amendments. It would tamp down on so much productivity and so much progress economically that it'd probably thrust us into a recession. Even the legacy media would suffer, so I'm not sure why the New York Times of all places would be interested in this happening. And you're, you've got to be a friggin' freak if you actually think that this would be a good idea. It sounds like they do think so. New York Times comes out and says, oh yeah, this censorship works. You know, it, fake news went away. Yes, fake news went away because they jail anybody who engages in satire. Pornography is less prevalent. Who fucking cares? Who cares if there's pornography on the internet? Some, some of the earliest juggernaut sites on the internet were pornographic in nature. Oh, you mean on social media and stuff? Well, guess what? Facebook does not let you post porn on Facebook. They barely even allow you to show breastfeeding pictures. And they take it down religiously when it's reported. Don't worry yourself about it. Fake news. What constitutes fake news? What exactly is being reported on on a regular basis that's objective? Most of the reporting that goes on in the old or new media is opinion and analysis. It's not even primary reporting. 
It can't be fake or real. It's somebody's fucking opinion. They can state things as though they were objective. They all do. They can be wrong when they do so, but it's still just opinion mongering, really. Most of what I do here, what I'm doing in this very video is explicitly protected by the First Amendment. It is a right of the press. I have the right to speak with all of you electronically. Fundamentally, though, the only objective thing here that I'm talking about is the fact that the New York Times created an article that says these things. They created an article saying uh, China's Great Firewall has advantages. That's objectively true. It's explicit within the article. It has advantages. Uh, it, it, you know, crushes uh, pornography out and they've hired a bunch of some thousands of people to enforce uh, new rules that they put into place. And if you criticize the Communist Party, of course, you get thrown into a gulag. These are all objective. The rest is my opinion. It's my opinion that such a system is whacked out. It's moronic. It's even more moronic than anybody living in the Western world would actually think that it was a good idea to import such a model here, overlap it onto the world's internet at large, a la some post, uh, post Merkelite version of censorship, give states the right in some uh, international body, I suppose, to actually enforce content. You can't do it nationally. Look, our internet is overlapped with the internet that's used by uh, <laughs> many, many other nations. So how can a single nation police its own content with people unless you intend to create a bunch of intranets that are only loosely associated? So you'd have a US internet, virtually separate from a German internet, virtually separate from a Chinese internet, virtually separate from a Russian internet. That doesn't sound like fun to me. One of the benefits of the internet, especially for somebody like me gaining this kind of audience is I can talk to people and talk to people in other countries. If it was just the US, how many people would actually be following me from within the US? About half, half of my audience. Well, about 45%, I think at last count was from within the US. That means no Canadian audience. I think Canada's number two. No UK audience. I think that's number three. Germany, oddly, is number four, I believe, despite the fact that they can't actually technically subscribe to my channel. As far as where the views on the content come from, Germany's a juggernaut. So thanks for that. And I can't remember who number five is. Some of the other states on that list, Mexico is up there, uh, usually in the top 10. I think Brazil uh, eked its way up to number nine some time ago. Russia, I think, is just outside the, the top 10. I think Japan's on that list now too. I, uh, Turkey, I'm pretty sure is too. Turkey and Poland. Oh, uh, it's funny because some of these states, they have uh, prevailing censorship. Anyway, the Turkish state censors stuff online quite heavily. They've gone after Twitter before. Like when the people, uh, when they had those commies there that killed the judges and people were posting pictures for, uh, I guess from inside or something, uh, they ordered Twitter to take it all down and block them out and then they block Twitter until they did. Like they actually try to cyber bully Twitter and Twitter for some reason rolls over and, and actually deals with it. If I were the CEO of Twitter, I'd say, oh, go ahead and fuck yourself. That's the proper reaction. These tech firms, by the way, I'm gonna tell them something that you, you need to start taking this seriously. This is, the New York Times is online too now. Like that's more important than their actual fucking newspaper. I would think they would want to engage in this too. You're all gonna get totally screwed if you don't start standing up against all forms of censorship. Yeah, it's not just people like me that are getting gonna get screwed. You know, the new media gets screwed. The legacy media will get screwed too. The entire thing. States will start to coerce you over and over again. Some of the things that you actually do wanna say, you're not gonna be able to say anymore. You're gonna be screwed up. Some of that clickbait's gonna go away. You're gonna need government subsidies before the end is done. Your online presence will always be hazarded. It's not going to make anything more secure. No, you know why China, China's tech is more secure? Because we don't tend to engage in the kind of cyber attacks that they uh, uh, like to engage in. Why would we? Why would we want to go after some fucking Chinese firm and steal their technology? There's no reason to. I've already got that tech. But they don't. That's why they do the attacking. They want that extra technology. They want that military edge that we have. So they're the ones that are gonna waste their time uh, on cyber intrusions. Building an intranet here is not gonna stop that. We've launched attacks on North Korea's uh, technological apparatus. They've got an intranet that's way more locked down than China's. How many computers are hooked to their internet? I think it's a few thousand, mostly in, a, in some universities and a handful of high-ranking government military officials can use the internet. 
Then they've got some more that are non-internet. They've got like to some rip-off Apple style product that actually looks, it's probably better than Crapple. It's probably more functional and I highly doubt it ever gets a virus because who's gonna fucking bother? That's uh, that we, we if we can attack them, that kind of internet system, it wouldn't be a problem to do. We'd probably wipe China off the face of the earth technologically. But what would be the reason? Yeah, let's screw uh, one of our major trading partners that keeps the prices, because we've fucked up our economy with interventionism and offshoring, let's screw up the only country capable of producing enough low-cost goods so people here don't start suffering shortages. Uh, yeah, that is a great idea. No, we're not gonna do that. But they don't care if it goes in reverse because the benefit uh, is more than the risk to them. And they've been doing it for a while. They realize that uh, our Washington DC is ballless when it comes to responding. The most they'll do is condemn it. Oh, it's a strongly uh, worded letter. That's all they're gonna do to fucking Russia too. By the way, we got major uh, reporting on Russia for later. Oh, it's gonna be great. It turns out, yeah, uh, there's certainly Russian corruption going on, only it involves the Clinton Foundation and Barack Obama. And uh, his Moscow uranium deal has nothing to do with Trump because it took place, you know, half a decade before that election actually began. Yeah, uh, what would you know about that? See, I was uh, saying that it was Clinton that was closer to Russia during the election. Yeah, no, over a year ago I said that. Nobody paid me any heed, at least uh, none of the partisan Democrats did. Some of the Republicans didn't either. They didn't want to believe it because because they some of them they were like oh Putin's a strong man it's good that we work with Putin I hope Trump really is in bed with him well he, he wasn't okay maybe that's commendable from your perspective but it's it wasn't true that's about all peace out.